Hello everyone, this is Jay from Brogaming TCG, and today we are going to go over a little bit of news today in this Road to Worlds gameplay, as well as talk about a little bit of the gameplay. Um, to start this off, the deck list, uh, I actually put it in the bo in the description of this video instead of last video. So in the last video, I said that if enough people wanted it, I would post it in the description of the video. I'm just going to go ahead, post my deck list of this Golduck uh Labyrus deck profile in the bottom in the description of this video so you guys can go down there check it out so first off I wanted to talk about a little about um, the upcoming uh, 2018 format uh, actually there has been a little bit of news that has been released about it there has been some new locations that have been released plus the new point system so basically um, the locations are all locations that have previously been in um, Pokemon. So the European Internationals will take place in the United Kingdom. The Oceania International Championships will take place in Australia. The Latin America Internationals will take place in Brazil. And the North American International Championships have yet to be included onto the list, but they, um, they're they usually held in uh, either Indianapolis, Cincinnati, or California, I believe. Uh, they were held in Indianapolis this year, but there is some new regionals this year, such as a Connecticut regional, a, a Vancouver regional, a North Carolina regional, a Tennessee regional, and uh, ones in Philadelphia, Athens, Seattle, and Arizona have been actually removed. So you got, if you guys live in those states, you're going to have to find some new regionals to go through. As of the point system, to qualify for Worlds, Masters, and Senior players in the United States and Canada will need 400 championship points, which is 100 left less for Masters in 2017. So actually, I believe quite a few people might make it to Worlds a little, uh, so more people will be making it to Worlds. The junior players only need 350 points. The European, Latin America, and Oceania players will all need 250 points regardless of the division that you guys are in and South African master players will need 250 points while juniors and seniors will only need 150 points. So a little bit of point changes and stuff that has been going on. So let's get into some of the gameplay that is that has been going on in the background here. So actually I believe that I have started this game with complete and utter crap in my hand. I haven't really had too many Golducks, too many Psyducks. I started off very, very poorly in this game, and I've been trying to recover, and actually, I really tried to recover this entire game. Go ahead, put the Float Stone onto Labrys, just in case he pulls that out. I actually get this Mew down, which is good. Um, really, and right now, he's already got all of his Passimians out. He's got both, he's got two Mews out. I'm currently just trying to take the Mews out, and go trade for trade form right now. I know that taking out some of the Psimians could have lowered the damage output that the Mews were having, but I felt the immediate threat was the Mews. I really didn't have any Lysanders as utilities. He actually makes a misplay here that I really could have capitalized on, but uh, I, I did my best to try and capitalize on it, but unfortunately it didn't work out in the end. But he goes ahead and pulls out my Labrys, uh, thinking that possibly I wouldn't retreat it, but um, I have a float stone on it, so I don't really know what he was thinking with the pullout of the Labrys. So I go ahead, it actually saves me a turn of not actually having up out my Golduck, because I wouldn't have been able to have a Golduck up. I actually get a Water Energy on a Psyduck, so I could possibly get a Golduck next turn. Go ahead, hit him for 60, and now both of his Mews are out, and two of his DCEs are down. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um... He goes ahead and hits Professor Kakui here. I don't think he really gets anything off of it, um, which is good for me because I believe he was hunting for a double colorless energy. Even though I, uh, so he puts some, he uses Puzzle of Time, then uses Instruct on a Runguru and pull. Go ahead, goes ahead and switches Soda Widow into the active position to save his Pissimian. Though I do have a Lysander in the discard pile now and a Burst Seeker in my hand, so really he wasn't saving any Pissimian. But I do evolve my Psyduck into Golduck and go ahead and Space Beacon that in a way because I'm not really looking for draw power right now. And I'm just looking to not get ahead in the game. And this is possibly my opportunity to capitalize. 
uh, off of that bad misplay that he used for Labrys. So go ahead, I should have probably Lysandered out Shaman instead of this Pissimian, but I was worried about the damage and I was trying to get the Pissimians off the bench because I know that was going to be his, that those are his only attackers in his deck. But he uses a revive to put his Pissimian back on the bench, gets a Verse Seeker, um, and then uses that Sycamore to draw seven more cards, which he doesn't have very many cards in his deck and he still has two DCEs in his deck. He does draw one, gets the Field Blower, knocks it off my Starmory for some reason. Not for sure why he didn't knock it off my Labrys. But, you know, to each their own. So, throw out my third Golduck of the game, which if I was playing Rescue Stretcher in this deck profile, I would have won this match. Just a little heads up, I, I actually ended up losing this match. But the matches that I won today while playing weren't really that great of matches to commentate over and to explain what I was thinking. So I decided to go with this match because it was actually a pretty close match and it's pretty interesting. I go ahead, knock out Passimian, and I have a couple options here. I could use that, use this for draw power, or I could use it to start stacking up Labrys. Um, I don't really have too many cards in my hand. I actually know at this point in time in the game that I have no more Psyducks in my deck and that the last Psyduck is prized. So either I have to figure out a way to take out that Shaman on the bench and win the game. I know I have a Verse Seeker in my hand and a Lysander in the discard pile. Um, what I wasn't thinking is that he has three DCE already in his discard pile. I wasn't really paying attention to how much DCE he has. Because if I knew how much DCE he had in his discard pile, I would have pulled out the Shaman and been able to win the, win the game. But... I didn't know how many much DC he had. Uh, I believe he actually, I think he had three, but I'm not for sure. I think his fourth one was on that Pisinian, and if I would have retreated it, he would have, he wouldn't have been able to retreat his Shaman without a Float Stone. And I don't think he was playing any since, oh you no, know, he was playing some because he actually has one on his Arungaru over there. So he might have had a Float Stone in his hand, but I'm not for sure about that. That's something that I was doing very poorly in this match, was I wasn't keeping track of his discard pile, and I also wasn't keeping track of his prize cards, the prize cards that he was pulling. When your opponent plays a town map, that also gives you an advantage of seeing which prize cards they have and which prize cards they pull. There's the rescue stretcher, and I was actually in a very good position to win this game if he wouldn't have Lysandered that uh, card out, because I already had one, I would have been able to place one, Next turn, would have been able to throw out my Starmory, and then it, he would have been left with one prize card, and I would have pulled out the Shaman and knocked it out with a Blizzard Burn, but unfortunately, he was able to retrieve a Lysander, and unfortunately, I, ha I just have two Starmories out, and there isn't much I can do. I know next turn that he is going to be able to knock, knock out one of my Starmories and take the KO. So, there was a few misplays for me, but he also had a few misplays that I did not capitalize on that I talked about. So and that's something that you guys just have to make sure. You know, you guys got to make sure that you're checking your opponent's discard pile. You guys got to make sure that you are checking your opponent's uh, prize cards if they have played a talent map. And that's, you know, and I actually go ahead and play my talent map just to see what my other card was other than the side that I didn't know about. Um, and that's something that you guys also need to, to take care of is your own prize cards. Know what's in your own prize cards. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. My name is Jay from Bro Gaming TCG, and I want to remind you all to always keep on battling and pursue your dreams. Thanks for watching.